Welcome back to Refit and Sale. This is Project Lottie. I'm inside a Contessa 32 that I am slowly going through and refitting. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I'm doing an osmosis, an osmosis even repair uh, on the bottom of the boat. Uh, and whilst that is drying out over the next little while, I've got some jobs I want to start on the inside. So I'm going to replace the water tank, which is under the floor. Let me just move the camera and I'll show you what I've got to do. So I've just pulled the carpet up and uh, removed the boom that was uh, through the middle of the boat here. And you can see there's the cabin sole. Uh, through that little hole there, you can see the opening which allows you to get into a GRP water tank. So these boats were originally built with GRP water tanks and unfortunately because they have fresh water in them they do regularly suffer from osmosis which in itself isn't a massive issue but it does make your water taste a little bit funny and if like me you enjoy a nice cup of tea you end up having to drink uh, bottled water and just use your tank for washing up and things like that. So um, one of the things you can do is to pull the floor up and replace that water tank that is down under there. So the first thing I've got to do is remove the table. So there are four fixings there, that two of which go through from the outside of the hull, and then two which go through the floor. So that's got to come out. Um, then I am going to have to look at these lockers here and here, because they are fitted on top of the floor. So I'm hoping I can gently remove those um, lockers or they're actually seats as well so uh, if I can get them out gently or persuade them out that'll make life a lot easier uh, the side bits which are kind of um, at an angle I think they are normally just kind of bogged down when the boat was built so they should with a minimal amount of persuasion uh, come up here it is looking from the other direction. Uh, this being a slightly earlier Contessa, it has uh, the early Contessa galley. Um, so it has a slightly larger piece of uh, cabin sole there. Um, the bulkhead is smaller as well. So I suspect I'm replacing that bit of cabin sole at the same time as I'm replacing the floor. The only slight complication I have just come up against is if I take this thing out, I opened up the tank and it's um it's full of water and some fluff by the looks of it. Um, that's a problem because uh, I've removed all the seacocks and so getting rid of that water is going to require maybe my wet vac. Well, I've been gently persuading the boat apart. The uh, table leg now comes off quite happily and I have been cutting through into the, the tabbing that holds some of this furniture in so I can now do that and uh, slightly off camera I can do the same with the one here. So these bits sit on top of the floor uh, and it now allows me to get to the bonding which is holding the floor in place on this side. So I think what I'm going to do next, if I bring the camera down so you can see the floor, uh, I think what I'm going to do next is try and take up this um, piece of flooring here which is really thin stuff which I suspect is just been bogged in on the inside of the hull um, and then start cutting away at this tabbing here and same there and uh, just start seeing how it all wants to come apart.
I'm not sure if there is such a thing as destruction therapy, but I have been kind of administering it a little bit to myself. The um, port side piece of wood came out almost in one piece, so uh, that was fairly straightforward and easy. Starboard side came off in many, many pieces, and some of it is still stuck onto the side of the boat. So um, I've just drilled out all the screws that were holding the floor down just in preparation for lifting the floor uh, but at some point I think I'm going to have to get suited up and spend an awful lot of time with the angle grinder and a flap disc just removing all this stuff because um, I've tried chipping it away and it is so well stuck on it just comes off in teeny tiny little bits so I think it's going to be out with the angle grinder and a mask and gloves and everything and uh, and then probably a shower afterwards because um, this needs grinding off. Horrible job, but necessary. Um, we're not far away from lifting this floor up. I haven't tried doing it yet because um, it's getting towards lunchtime, so uh, I think it's going to be a job for another day. Um, but I don't think it's going to take an awful lot to pull it up, which is good. You can see here the floor has come up and that is the top of the water tank so uh, those bits that are going from left to right are the floor bearers so next part of this job is going to be to start chopping the bonding out between those floor bearers and the side of the hull and then around the top of the water tank and then in theory the whole thing just lifts out and goes straight in the bin. For a Contessa water tank, this one has been fairly well bonded in and uh, hadn't kind of uh, detached as some of them have over the years if the boat's been sailed fairly hard. Um, so I've done an awful lot of chopping on the uh, bonding that holds it all in. You can see I've taken all the floor bearers out and I think I've now got it to the stage where I should be able to pull it out so um, you're either going to see a tank coming out or me going oh dear I need to do some more cutting so we'll see I think it might still be attached at the other end slightly, but that might just, yeah. Oh, the water tank. There you go, first look under the water tank. It's a little bit grot down there and you can see the sides of the water tank are just black from filth of years of grotty, horrible water. One of the worst bits about this job is uh, you can't really leave the bilge looking disgusting and right down there is the very back bottom corner of the bilge and uh, I've just been bailing it out and then kind of cleaning it out with paper tissue and then scraping out kind of goo and lumps of I don't really want to know what um, but it's fairly clean now um, but it has to be said that was pretty disgusting um it's just old boat stuff it's quite normal for a boat of this age to be pretty foul down there just because it's the lowest part of the boat so years and years of accumulated grime and dirt end up down there and you can't really access it unless you've got the water tank and the floor up like this it's really hard so i think i'm going to go to the workshop and get some nasty cleaning chemicals which should 
clear any kind of remaining greasy oily film that's um, down there and then I might stick the pressure washer lance in here because I need to pressure wash the hull again externally so I think I might walk up uh, once I've given it a good soak with some cleaning chemicals and, uh, and then oh, that little bit down there will hopefully look an awful lot cleaner and the boat might smell a bit nicer because um, it has got a bit of old boat smell this uh, this thing since I've taken the floor up and exposed the under under floor bilgy area so um, the sooner that's cleaned up the better as far as I'm concerned because it stinks. Mast it seems to be okay it's always worth having a good poke around when you've got good access like this with the floor up so um, it all appears to be relatively solid. The wood on the very, very end is slightly soft, but as soon as the screwdriver goes in more than a mil or two, um, it, it appears to be solid wood. The screws holding it down are slightly loose, which was um, surprising. I just stuck a screwdriver in it just to see if they'd shift and they all come out really easily. So I don't know whether that's been off before or maybe even the mast step's been replaced, but it kind of looks original to me. So. Um, so I don't know quite what's going on there, but um, I shall certainly probably whip them out and then uh, maybe stick them back in so they're tight. Um, but it might be worth, if it's loose, taking that mask step off and giving it a coat of paint just to make it look nice. As you can see, I've been having a fantastic dusty time prepping the internal sides of the hull. I've done most of one side. It's got this kind of um, what they call bog really, it's um, kind of a polyester filler cum adhesive which was used to stick the wood on and getting it off is a matter of chipping away at it um, to get most of it off and then getting on it with an angle grinder with a flat disc and you end up with a fairly clean hull. Here you go, looking from the other side you can see how far I've got um, so I guess I'm very nearly halfway Although I've still got to take the step out up there, but there shouldn't be too much um, bog under there to get off and uh, clean up. So it's just, unfortunately, more dusty work tomorrow. I've got water slowly collecting at the very back aft end of the um, keel down there. So every time it collects, I hoover some out. So I'm guessing there's some water trapped somewhere under the... Um, under the floor here, which is very slowly trickling out. So if I keep sucking out the water as it arrives, eventually it will stop and then I can fill up that gap at the bottom back there and uh, that will hopefully solve the problem going forward. Sitting in the bottom of the boat, having spent my second afternoon of grinding, I have had a tidy up, although it probably doesn't look like it behind me. It's all still fairly dusty, but um, the sides of the boat are looking much cleaner and I've now got a surface that I can kind of do something with, which is better than what I had before. I'll switch the camera around so you can see what it looks like properly. Looking down and going forward, you can see both sides have been ground back. So uh, everything's nice and clean now and ready for some bonding action probably tomorrow. There's the odd patch on the hull which I highlighted in a, an earlier clip like here where the very top layer of laminate has come away and I'm not sure if that's old damage or that's something that I've done as part of the um, removal of all the bog but um, that's going to be easily solved by um, just laying up a little bit of extra glass in those little patches and then uh, maybe stabilize the whole structure by laying up a layer of glass over the whole area. As is normal with Contessa's, a little bit of um, secondary bonding failure at the bottom of the main bulkhead there, so I'll ground that all out and I will lay up some new tabbing uh, in there to hold it all back together again. I'm also going to do a modification on the port side here. You can see there's a little bit of a crack there, which is evidence of some movement. So these boats do have quite a big flat area on the port side. When the boat is heeled well over, it can take a bit of a pounding. So it's worth putting some extra structure in there if you're doing some work in the boat anyway. So I'm going to lay up uh, some glass over a uh, effectively an extra stringer that's going to run alongside that back piece of wood there, which uh, makes up part of the U-city. 
I'm pretty dirty and I'm pretty tired after all that cleaning and grinding so I'm going to go and jump in the shower and put some dinner in my stomach and call it a day for today and uh, give the owner a quick update on progress as always and uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll bring some slightly cleaner work even if it's going to be sticky bonding it's going to be better than grinding it's now the next day and uh, i don't have polyester in my ears anymore which is nice um i mentioned a structural mod i'm going to do on the port side here um in order for me to do that i need to probably do a load of prep work kind of in the bottom of that locker there which um is covered in stuff at the moment um but i want to retain exactly the location of all the furniture so before i start chopping out the bonding which is holding this i want to reattach that bit of uh, internal furniture first um, what I'm going to do is, because I'm going about this slightly differently, is I want to extend this all the way down onto the hull here. So I've got a piece of plywood that's the correct um, width and uh, I'm going to cut that to size and I'm going to effectively bond the two pieces of plywood together to extend that down and then the whole lot will get glassed in, tied into the hull. It's going to be a slightly stronger way of doing it. It's the way that new contessas are built. Uh, they do that for a reason, it just helps add some structure into this area around the keel. You can see the pieces of wood that I have templated and then cut to fit in the gap between the existing locker sides and the hull. So the, uh, the new pieces of wood and the existing are going to be kind of glassed together um, back in the workshop so that they're completely flat and then the whole lot can be all glassed back into the boat. So that adds a lot more structure into the hull just in that area. It's not uncommon as I think I mentioned for the bonding at the base of the bulkhead there to start coming adrift because there's a lot of loading in that area with the mast step obviously close by as well. So more structure in there is always a good thing and it's the way they build the new boats so um, it's certainly something I'm going to copy and I've done on other boats as well. So the floor will end up coming up to the uh, end of the mast step at the lowest point and then I'm going to be putting in a step uh, so that uh, as you walk forward through the boat you will uh, have a little step up into the forward heads area. Uh, and that stops you from having to put your foot on the side of the boat, which is the traditional way of doing it, but a lot of boats now are having a little step put in there so, uh, so you don't slide down the side of the boat when walking forward. Back in the workshop now with this piece of internal furniture that you saw a little bit earlier. I've got to extend it down as I showed you to bring it down towards the hull. My plan to join the two together to make it as strong as possible is I'm going to remove some material either side of this join line. I'll probably measure back maybe about an inch or so or three centimetres. So there'll be a six centimetre um, area where I'm going to remove one or two of the laminated um, uh, layers of wood as part of the plywood. Um, then I can lay up some glass in that strip um, having smushed some epoxy in the gap between the two um, and that will uh, then get overlaid at a later date with a piece of glass that maybe overlaps that by two inches on either side so it'll be a four inch strip that goes all the way down there and by doing that on both sides I'll end up with a structure that is almost if not as strong as having one single piece of plywood here so um, that'll work quite well eventually when it gets bonded into the boat of course I'll be laying up glass that goes up over the hull here and then it will go over the top of my join as well so it should be super strong and work quite nicely the reason I don't want to make new furniture is because I want all the furniture to match and the wood actually is in pretty good condition it may not look like it because it's covered in dust but once that has been um, prepared for new varnish so if I scrape all this old coating off and re-varnish it it will come up I'm very confident looking kind of like new. Externally you don't need to worry too much about this join being on show because ultimately there'll be a step that comes in around about here so all of this is going to be hidden from sight anyway. <music>
go, ground out my little slot that I'm going to be laying some glass up in. So that's about probably a mil and a half deep, I guess, maybe two mil deep. And uh, I'll be able to get three layers of the uh, combi mat in there quite happily. Um, I may not do the overlapping piece this time. I'll probably just do that, stick some peel ply on it, and then take it down to the boat. And then when it all gets glassed in, it will get its second layer then just to tie it all together over the top. Back on the boat now, I've just done a trial fit on this piece of internal furniture that I've modified and it looks like it's a pretty good fit. I've got to do one little bit of sanding down the, the bottom there out of shot just to make it fit perfectly back in where I want it to go. But before I start refitting things into the boat, this has really just been a destructive and removal video. So I'm gonna call this episode done. Thank you very, very much for watching check out the next video it's going to be more of the same it's either going to be me working on the internal refit or me carrying on with the external osmosis treatment because it's kind of all happening at the same time but i'm trying to focus episodes on one particular job at a time it doesn't always work but um, i'm doing my best to try and concentrate on one one job at a time um, if you like this sort of stuff do press the subscribe button and the like button it really does help me grow the channel and it means you get notified of future videos thanks again for watching i'll see you next time